Well, I think, um, thank you for asking the question, first of all. That's something that's very common, as you mentioned, for many women of color faculty members that I know of, and also women in, in business. I've seen this with a number of, of my colleagues and friends who are, are in corporate America. Um, we're often, I think what's, what's sometimes missing is that we are we're doing the job that we do, that we're assigned to do, but then we have a whole host of tasks and other things that pull on our time. For instance, we're asked to mentor uh, we mentor our students, like I'll use the university setting first and then I'll give you some other examples, but we mentor students that come to work with you as a, as a faculty member, right? Um, and so those are your assigned students that are officially part of your, your crew, if you, for, will, for lack of a better word. Then you have people that you might mentor that are in the profession, that are, that are junior to you in the, in the larger profession. And then you might have um, prospective students that are that are your courting or they're trying to get to know you or learn about your research that that so then you might so your 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 list on your university might say I have six students I'm just throwing a number out there, but you may really have a, a, a sphere of like 15 to 20 people that you are mentoring and what does that mean, it means that you're writing letters of recommendation for more than the people that you might assume as a coworker of theirs that they're writing for. You might not recognize that, and this is that they're writing for, you know, 12 or 15 more people than you imagine them to write for. And it's not such, so much that, that, that we don't, or that I don't know how to say no, because I say no all the time. So it's not that simple, but there's sometimes you, you choose to mentor people where you may feel like you have a responsibility to them, or you, you're connected to them in a certain way. And I don't, I mean, there's a variety of ways that would be. Um, and that you feel like, you know, I want to help shape this person's career. I want to help bring them along. I also want to maybe just pay it forward. I mean, so many people paid it forward for me so that when we get requests, I'll give you another example. We have to write letters when people are being reviewed for tenure and promotion and they're outside letters for other institutions. And so people wrote for me that I didn't know. There's eight to 10 people that wrote for me. So whenever I get asked, I try to say yes. We try to say yes, but that's another list of letters that you're writing that is is labor that's not necessarily seen. So I think one of the that's just one example with the with the letter writing. Um, but in addition to that, we're asked. I'm often asked to do speaking engagements um, in community organizations, which I love to do. I, speaking engagements with K through 12, you know, schools, uh, school boards, churches, community centers, um, you know, corporate uh, spaces. Where so we have a, a whole host of other speaking engagements outside of. The, the, the regular responsibilities that you have. And so there's a constant, there's a constant pull in multiple directions. I feel like if I had to think of one animal to represent, um, particularly I'll speak for my community, women of color um, in any field, I would say we're like, we're, we have eight arms. We're, or people assume we have eight arms. We're like an octopus. We have all these tentacles and there's all kinds of things pulling on each of those tentacles. And so sometimes you might see one of your coworkers in a meeting and you're expecting them to speak up or to say something. And that might not be a dialogue or a battle that they choose to fight that day. And they just might say, you know, I'm tired today. I'm not, I don't have to announce that, but I'm just, I'm not, you know, I'm just going to sit there and watch everybody else do that labor. Right. Um, because people, but sometimes there's an expectation that Dinah would have said something right now, or why isn't Wanda speaking up? You know, it's like, well, maybe somebody else can speak up today. Yeah. I see this in the corporate world where women and people of color, there are too few of them to go around for all the places that you would like to have at least one of representing. Mm -hmm. And I feel sorry for women of color because they cross both boundaries simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like it's a two for count, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. in an unfair way. It is mm -hmm. a bit of that. But you, no one ever takes stock of how many things we have asked this person to do. Exactly. And then individuals within the organization will get upset. Well, she doesn't help me. Mm -hmm. And you just like, do you know who, how many others she is helping already? And it's, excuse me, not personal, but there's just so much time yes. that I, I can give. Yeah, you nailed it right there. Because that, that really is it, is that um, there's an expectation, like, what, what is she doing for me or for my organization or my team? And there's an there's assumption that well if she's not doing this for us then what's wrong why isn't she not why is she not supporting us and oftentimes it's because she's doing X Y Z P D Q for seven or eight other different groups or other organizations 
Um, and so that's really a challenge. Um, and that's a really huge challenge for women. And I, I don't want to say it's just women of color, like you said, um, many groups of people, but I would say that it's, it's it most affects women of color from, from my experience, but that's, I'm a woman of color, so... <laughs> Fair enough. I think it affects men of color as well. I think anytime you're in that very small minority and we want to put you in everything under the sun, we just don't stop to take stock of what are you already committed to and how much time extra is it? And that's something that a leader can help with if they'll tune into it. 